We're aired down, we're on our way. We are now hitting the red dirt, off grid camping. How good is this? Better than I thought. Hardly anybody here. The tides are huge here. They're massive, they're nine metres. The beaches here in Lombardina are known to be the most beautiful in the world. I'm gonna go for a bit of a splash. We don't know what bitey bites are in the water up this way. Bit of excitement. There's this huge shark. Red tailed black cockatoos. Something you don't get to see too often. Baths at night under the stars. That's what I call luxury camping. So good. Zone Travels Off Grid Ventures. In this episode, we continue exploring the northwestern part of Australia. This time, we take you to the Dampier Peninsula, a part of the Kimberley region. Starting in Broome, we head straight to Quandong Point, where we relax for a week, fishing, creating art, enjoying campfires and taking day trips to Bard Creek and Wiley Pearl Farm. Next, we venture to the iconic James Price Point, camping right amongst its vibrant red cliffs, overlooking the beautiful turquoise ocean. From there, we arrive at the warm and welcoming Lombardina community. Staying in their stunning new campgrounds, we explore One Arm Point and the renowned Signet Bay Pearl Farm. Swimming in crystal clear waters and walking its pristine beaches, we connect with local culture through art and stories shared at Lombardina's Gallery. Our final stop is Pender Bay where we camp on top of red cliffs overlooking its beautiful sweeping bay, cook damper on the campfire, bathing under the stars. The Dampier Peninsula is unlike anywhere else, a land defined by its vivid colours, burnt red cliffs, white sandy beaches and incredible turquoise seas of the Indian Ocean. It's home to the Badi Jawi people, whose deep connection to the land and sea is woven into every corner of this region. Camping on and amongst the Pendon Cliffs was amazing. They are a defining feature of the Dampier Peninsula with their vivid red soil known as Pendon, which is a hallmark of the Kimberley region's unique geology. So come along as we explore and camp along its 300 kilometer stretch of coastal beauty and cultural significance from Broome all the way up to its tip. Dampier Peninsula, let's dive into its beauty and together explore what makes this place a true gem of Australia's Northwest. Let's begin by taking you back to Broome. My goodness, it's blowing a gale today. Good morning, everyone. We are in Broome. We've been here for a couple of days, just stocking up on everything again and um, taking a bit of a break. We are now heading up to Dampier Peninsula and um, we're so excited about that. There's several camp spots that we want to go and see up there, uh, off-grid camping. So we're going to head up to a camp today called Kwandong Point. Really looking forward to it, hitting the red dirt. We're going to head out of Broome and air down somewhere first and uh, we'll see you up there. Radio. We're on the road up the Dampier Peninsula. Very excited. So, last time we did this, it was dirt and it was full on dirt. We were driving the road through, and it was about a metre either side of us was the actual terrain. So, being on the black top on the way up feels like luxury. So, Quandong Point is located about 50 k's north of Broome on the western side of the Dampier Peninsula and it's supposed to have some pretty specky ocean views. Okay, so this is a free camp, but you have to be self-sufficient. Beautiful spot, we're looking forward to it. 
we got about three kilometres before we got to turn left on a road called Manaro Road and then we hit the dirt again so we'll have to air down. We have um, seen so many photos of it, it looks absolutely gorgeous so um, hang on in there, we'll be there soon to show you. So we've just set up the van and um, had a drink. So what we're doing now is we're going to go further up north, right up to Kwandong Point itself, and do a little bit of exploring and see what's happening with the beaches up there. There's lots of different tracks and they're getting smaller and smaller. At the end of the day, I'm really glad I haven't got the van because it's tight and scratchy. Yeah, South Kwandong for us is the place to go. I mean, this would be awesome if you've um, got a rooftop tent or you're tenting or you've got, um, you know, a small hybrid van. I think you'd be fine. But yeah, it's pretty narrow. That's really one thing that I love different coastlines and different beaches there's just so many different aspects to this beach we've got all these different colored soft gray browny olive rocks here and then up the back there you've got these uh, they look like sculptures they look like sand castles made out of rust red you know like the dribble castles that kids make absolutely fascinating i'm loving the contrast on these beaches beautiful So it's a beautiful afternoon. It rained this afternoon, so we bunkered down in the van and did some work. Anyway, it's all settled down a bit now, and we've got the most beautiful sunset starting to uh, creep in over the beach. So we thought we might go down for a walk and see what's down there amongst the rocks. The tides are huge here, aren't they? 
they're massive, they're nine meters. And, um, there's all these little hermit crabs all <laughs> over our mat. They're all crawling and then they get a vibration and they stop. <laughs> so, they think you, they think that you won't be able to see them when they go retreat back into their shell. They're, they're pretty cool. They're pretty so cool cute. <laughs> Alrighty, hey listen, we'll get back down to our beach walk. We're just going to head down the track now, but check out the view. morning everyone beautiful morning watching the moon setting down over to the west over this beautiful Indian Ocean here this morning gorgeous anyways today we are going to head further back south down to Woods Broom along the track because down there is Willie Creek Pearl Farm so um, we thought we might just pop in there and check out what's happening there and uh, then we'll go down and have a look at Bard Creek. Just left uh, the main road and we're going down a pretty bumpy dirt track um, alongside Bard Creek. So this creek is pretty well known for good fishing and uh, camping alongside the creek and then it leads out to the ocean where there's um, a beautiful sandy beach at the mouth of the river. Um, I've seen plenty of photos of it. We've timed it so that it should be the top of the tide. As I said before, big tides here, nine metre tides, so it'll be absolutely beautiful to put the drone up at high tide down there. So I've got the van there, we're staying there, and then we've driven down on the road here and turned into Bard Creek. Now, there's a little track to the left, but just here there's that little peninsula. That is the famous Bart Creek where you go out and you park your four-wheel drives right on the beach. Um, also here is uh, a good supply of barra and threadfin and blue salmon.
How good is this? Oh, you're not wrong. This is better than I thought. The tide's ripping in. We're just heading down to Willie Creek Curl Farm. Maybe for a bite to eat and a drink and we'll show you what's there. Great setup at Willie Creek Pearl Farm. Little did we know that they did have a cafe there. It was really beautiful, set under the oasis of a whole heap of beautiful shady trees overlooking the creek. So we tucked in and ordered a beautiful seafood platter. So they run a couple of different tours at the Pearl Farm. And um, so you can book in for the talks and then there's a, a boat tour. You can also take uh, helicopter flights and which would give you a really great overview. So it's located about 38 k's north of Broome on a protected and a really beautiful tidal estuary. Really enjoyed laying my eyes on the most stunning pearls. So what are you hoping to catch today, Pete? I'm going to catch a queen fish today. The hot tip for uh, Kwandong is this wide open sort of sandy, muddy flats and you walk straight down to where the water is at low tide and all the muck and food, it's like a big drain. It all goes out, little fish come to eat on the, on the nutrients and then the bigger fish come in to eat the little fish. Just walking around exploring the sand flats while Pete has a fish. It's incredible. Like um, the water is still draining from this huge tide and it, and it comes right down here and right out to sea. And uh, it just takes forever. The, the tides are so big up here.
another day here at Kwandong Point and this afternoon we've decided to go further down the beach here about oh, say 500 meters along to an area where there's a break in the rocks and it's just a sandy bottom way out to the really low tide mark so we're going to go out there and just see what's happening Okay, so we've just spotted a shark. He's at knee deep water. Oh my god, he's huge. <laughs> a, um, I'm pretty sure it's one of those ones with the sore on the front of their nose. I don't know, but his fin was huge. There he is, just out here. See? Oh, yeah, God, he's got a, oh. a big fin. But, I, but he's, he's in so close. I'll see if I can zoom in a bit. So that was a little bit of excitement. It was this huge shark. And he literally came in to knee deep of water where our neighbors camping next to us were fishing. And um, he was just going for all the little bait fish. So he was there for about five minutes, swishing around and having a good feed. But he seems to have gone now. Good morning everyone. Well, it's pack up day today down here at Kwandong Point. It's been amazing. It's a really nice day to move. However, just with uh, the last couple of days with scattered showers, it has left quite a few pretty major um, puddles right up the red dirt track. And so we don't know what the track's like, obviously up to James Price Point. It's about uh, a 40 minute drive from here. So we're just hoping that the roads are not too wet but we'll just wait and see just tackle that one when when we get to it i've uh, never been to james price before so we can't wait to get there and check it out see you up there guys Anyways, look, we'll just get up there, check it out. Hopefully we get a spot. Hey, someone's leaving. We might get a spot. You? Yeah, fingers crossed.
No way. <laughs> no way. How good is this? <laughs> There's like literally hardly anybody here. There would be two vans way down the other end. So it looks like we'll be able to take our pick. Ah, the blessings out of traveling off season. Thumbs up. <laughs> wow, what a spot. Isn't this amazing? Yeah, James Price Point is put on a great day for us. There's nobody here. There's two other vans and the weather is beautiful. The temperature's about 30 degrees. It's Queenslanders. We absolutely love that temperature. Um, we're just setting up now. I'm unhitching the car and then we'll go for a wander and have a look around when it gets a bit cooler tonight. So the tides come in and uh, we're going to go down for a bit of a splash. We can't get in too deep because we don't know what bitey biteys are in the water up this way. But um, it'll certainly be really nice to cool down. It's pretty warm up here. It's amazing the colour of the sea when it hits high tide and sometimes it'll wash up and grab some of that red sand that is sitting just at the base of the cliffs or even gets right up to the cliff sometimes and it drags it out to sea into that turquoise and when it mixes it makes this kind of like plummy pink mauvey colour. It's incredible. It rained up here on the damp here a few days ago and um, it was quite significant. And what I love is that you can see the red dirt runoff from the cliffs up here behind me, right the way down into the sea here. Absolutely beautiful. I love how nature creates its own marks in weather events like that.
beautiful spot to make a sand mandala. It needs to be kept really simple. And the reason for that is that the patterns on the earth here, on this beautiful red soil, are already there. From the recent rains, it washed all the red dirt down over the sand and you can see all these beautiful marks that have been carved out by the water. And so I thought, nature's patterns, they're already there. I'm just going to work with what's there and just create very simple concentric circles. Beautiful. So what have you liked the most about your stay here, Tony? We are cupped by this amazing ancient cliff face that has been worn down for thousands of years and I loved walking up into each little crevice and looking at where the water has carved these waterways down through the cliffs. I'm glad we came here because we won't be able to do this again like further north we'll be up on the cliffs and um, but here you're actually parked mm. in it yeah just to have the privacy the seclusion the space is an absolute treat so feeling really grateful so north of the Dampier Peninsula tomorrow happy to still head up to Lombardina yeah look I think we should go straight to the top looking forward to that to our next stage and uh, we've got about 38 kilometres driving along this dirt road and then we'll hit the uh, broom to Cape Levesque Road which is now bitumen six years ago it was dirt and boy was it a journey up there so now it's going to be on the blacktop it's going to be really pleasant um, it's about three hours drive so we'll stop for a break along the way
Good morning everyone. Good morning. Beautiful day to wake up to today. I'm up the top end of the Dampier Peninsula. So the Lombardina community where we're staying is located right next to the beach and not just a beach, it is absolutely sublime. I don't think I've ever seen such white sand and, and clear waters. It, like I had to pinch myself. And so the community, I think I mentioned yesterday on the way up here, it's about 200 kilometres drive north of Broome. Lombardina is an Aboriginal owned community and it's home to the Bardi people of this area. What the community's done is they've got um, the campground that we're staying at is just well thought out. The green grass, the sites have got crushed granite there, there's power, there's water, there's amenities there, washing machines, there's barbecues. Um, it's fairly new camping and um, all in all, it's fenced off, it's gated. And a big thank you to the community. If you're up this way, make the effort to come and stay. You support the community. This morning, we've just stopped at the um, Ardulon One Arm Point community. So we're heading up to the hatchery and it's located on the Sunday Straits. Yeah, so when the little crab molts, he'll have to, he absorbs heaps of water, so it causes little cracks in his shell, and that allows him to pop this open, and that way he can wriggle out the back here, and all these little legs will come out, and then the last leg are his claws that comes out. Wow. When he comes out, he's all soft and squishy. Yes. So they're very vulnerable, so it takes him a couple of days to harden back up again. So oh. if you've ever eaten soft shell crab, those are crabs that have just molted. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. And what about this fella here? So this is his second molt. So this was his first molt and yeah. his second molt. Um, so he did this two months ago and this was last week. Um, when they're small like this, they'll do it every every couple of times during the year. But when they get big, so this guy over here, yeah. he only does it about once a year. Because um, it's very hard. It gets harder for them because they're a bigger animal. And it takes a lot of energy for them to do that. So they leave their shell yeah. and create a new one? Yeah, so when they come out they're all soft, but that's still their shell, so it takes them a couple of days to sort of toughen it back up again. Wow, that's beautiful. Dear Sarah from Ardia Loon, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge today. No, it's no, been no. lovely to Pleasure. meet you. Thank you for coming and visiting us at the hatchery. It's absolutely beautiful country. Thank, thank you so you. much. Okay, so next up this morning is Signet Bay Pearl Farm. They have accommodation there and tours, and they did have a small cafe, so um, we're hoping to head down now and have a little light bite for lunch. It's such a treat to hang out there at Signet Bay Pearl Farm just for a couple of hours. We've feasted on actually one of the most beautiful seafood pastas we've had in a long time. And they've got lots on offer up there, so they do all sorts of sea safaris. And um, they also have the Pearl Farm tour. So that's really, really informative too. We did it a few years ago, highly recommend it. They also have a really beautiful gallery. And um, as you walk through it, there's a beautiful array of uh, pictures and photographs show you the history and the evolution of the Pearl Farm. The most exquisite, traditionally carved pearl shell. Uh, absolutely beautiful.
we're going to head just around the corner here uh, into the heart of the Lombardina community this morning. We're going to go and visit this beautiful old historic church. The other thing we'd love to see is the art centre here. very much for sharing all about the beautiful knowledges and stories here at this beautiful gallery in Lombardina community. Thank you very much auntie. Yes, all right. Very it's great. Okay, yeah. Beautiful. The church is open most of the time and just the fact that we can walk through and enjoy that really special place and we really appreciated the craftsmanship in there. Um, Auntie Caroline was sharing with me that the old people travelled way over to King George Sound to cut down the timber, the mango wood, and then they had to float it all the way back around the coast here to Lombardina. And that was the first part of the process. And then the second part was to create the beautiful hardwood floors. Uh, they chopped down some bloodwood tree and then they had to cart that all the way south down towards the Beagle Bay community where they had the only sawmill in the area. And that's where they had all the timber floorboards made and then they had to cart them all the way back up here. So. Wow, a lot of love, blood, sweat and tears went into that beautiful little church. It's the way the roof was lined with that paper bark and the way that everything had been built just so sensitively and so beautifully and, and it's still there today so it was just beautiful. So from the mission days right through until now it is still an operating church. The water here is very warm and it's this really lovely soft saltiness. What an amazing beach. It's just miles and miles and miles of beautiful white pristine sand. It's just such a treat. It's been a while since we've been able to really safely swim in the water and just relax into it. So if you are up this end, the top end of the Dampier Peninsula, highly recommend coming to stay here at Lombardina Community. It's just been beautiful. So tomorrow we are heading down to our next camp. Panda Bay. So we've been there about six years ago and we're going back but we've got a bigger site this time because we've got a bigger van and we've got our own private bath. Are you kidding? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> three days, three days of private baths under the sun, under the stars. Whoop, big wave. Absolutely can't wait to get there. And yeah. we, we can swim there as well. Awesome, can't wait. <laughs> Let's go. See you down there, everyone. So, farewell to Lombardina. So today we are heading back down the Dampier Peninsula Broome Road, heading back down south. We're going to turn off into a dirt track that will take us to Panda Bay. Um, there's a series of uh, little campgrounds um, west of the main road, like there's Smithies, there's Middle Lagoon, there's Panda Bay, there's Whale Song and there's a couple of others. So we chose Panda Bay, uh, it's a little bit of a favourite of ours. It's going to take us about an hour and a half from Lombardina. Alrighty, 
Alrighty, time to air down. So I'm airing down now and I've got a tie deflator. They're made by Storm and there's four of them. So what I've worked out is that I've got eight tyres, obviously, two on the van and two on the car. Um, so I do one side first and then I do one side second. However, one of the deflators I've got set at 32 because it takes the rear axle into account. So the tyres on the rear of the car, 32, the rest of them go down to 20. Radio, we're air down, we're on our way, so excited, can't wait. So Pender Bay Escape sent us a text this morning with some directions and a mud map of the campground and uh, so that we could actually identify where our site is. So we're on site C3, so that's where we're heading now. Here we are, I can see the sea. There's our site C3 and I can see the bathtub sitting right at the back of our campsite out on the cliff. We found it. We've found heaven. Alex and Liam, we've got a thank you for this. The tip on that bathtub site. So excited. Thanks, guys. Oh my god, what a spot. Absolute cracker. Bars open. everyone well beautiful beautiful night last night listening to those waves lapping up on the beach below us so this morning we are heading off down the track here and further along the cliffs past some more of the campsites and we're looking for a track that we can access that big beautiful beach with we're gonna go for a swim and hang it on the beach and uh, check out these beautiful big red cliffs. Catch you down there. How about this? I absolutely love this. This is awesome. All 
All right, so you're able to drive down to the beach here. It's high tide, water's up, it's gonna be beautiful for a swim. I just wanna show you over here behind me. We are just up, tucked up here behind the trees. All the campsites are all along the top of this cliff. Absolutely magnificent. All right, guys, we'll go for a swim. There's a whole tree full of beautiful red-tailed black cockatoos. Absolutely magnificent. Gosh, that's something you don't get to see too often. Good morning everyone. Well this morning we have watched uh, yet another beautiful sunrise. We've come over to this little campsite to have a look. This very spot here is where we spent a night in a tent six years ago and it blew like nothing you've ever known. The whole tent was full of red sand by the time we woke up and it's quite funny because we've actually called it Chip Packet Bay. <laughs> because it sounded like we were sleeping in a chip packet all night. Well, actually, there was no sleep. And we just have a good laugh at that now. But yeah, really happy memories. So we had the biggest fire I think we have ever had in all our years of travel right here in this little spot. It's really nice to be back. Okay, so it's getting hot. It's 41 degrees and it is 11.30 a.m. in the morning. You can go and cool down at the beach, which is what we're gonna do right now. We're going back to revisit a spot that was a favorite of ours a few years ago, and I think it's quite popular. A lot of people come here, and we're looking for a large rock in the shape of a love heart. So we're heading along the beach now. We're about to come around a corner, and hopefully we can find it. Oh! <laughs> Look at that! There it is! Oh, that is perfect. Are you serious? 
here guys happy jan so i was given this wine a winemaker when i was doing my phd i kept it all this time it's a 1998 port tonight is going to be our final night here in western australia off-grid camping and we're going to celebrate with this sorry andy you would have really loved this mate but i'm going to drink it So we're all packed up. We leave the Dampier Peninsula today. We're gonna miss this. Alrighty, time to check the lights and we're off. we're left with the breathtaking beauty and quiet power of the Dampier Peninsula. From its remote coastlines to its ancient Pendon red cliffs and the turquoise waters of the Indian Ocean, this remote corner of Australia offers more than just a place to camp. It's about sinking with the rhythms of nature. There's something magical about the hush and hum of camping by the ocean and the pull of the giant tides up here rising and falling day and night. For us, it's about taking time to learn about local stories and knowledges and taking time to listen, enriching experience of place and deepening connection to this landscape and its people. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed touring the Dampier Peninsula with us. If you're enjoying our content and not already subscribed, please consider subscribing, it's easy and completely free. If you're watching this on TV, you can scan the QR code shown here now with your phone. It will take you straight to the subscribe button. Your likes and comments really matter to us. They really do support our content and help our channel grow, allowing us to continue sharing our adventures. We'll see you on the next one.